In front of me is two cameras, the Sony Alpha 1 and the Canon R5. Now, in my last video, I said that the Alpha 1 felt faster. It felt like it had lower latency. So in this video, I'm going to investigate it. So uh, just note that the R5 and the A1 are set at the best setting. So anything that slows the camera down, I disable it. So such thing as eco mode, anti-flicker, all is disabled for both cameras. And then for the Canon camera, I'll be trying it on electronic and mechanical. The reason being is because there is a difference in image quality. While for the Sony, I'll be just doing it purely on electronic, but I'll be trying it on H and H plus viewfinder mode to see whether refresh rate will affect the latency or not. So the thing is, what is latency? Latency is between you seeing the shot and your finger responding to it and ultimately capturing the shot in your SD card. So there is a time and there is three components to this. Now, human reaction is not very fast. We are about 200 milliseconds to 300 milliseconds. So depending on how good you are, you know, you can be any part of this range. Or if you're really good, 150 milliseconds is also possible. So just to note that everything you see here is recorded based on my reaction time, which I'm not really sure what is it. I think it's about 200 milliseconds. And then, you know, everything else is the camera latency itself. So how I did this test is I constantly capture shots of a stopwatch on my computer and I keep capturing, 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 then I do an average and I do a lot of captures. On average, about 25 to 30 captures for every single mode, then I average it out. Now for the Sony, the H plus mode in viewfinder, which is the highest refresh mode, uh, I get it around uh, 243 milliseconds. So on the screen, you'll see 24.3. That's because I captured the last two decimal place, 0.3. And then the decimal place, you know, the last two decimal place of a second is 240 milliseconds and the 0.3 is 3 milliseconds itself. So 243 milliseconds for the H plus mode and 248 milliseconds for the normal H mode. While for the Canon itself, uh, what I did was uh, I tried the same thing, both electronic and mechanical, and in electronic shutter mode, I get 270 milliseconds, while in mechanical, I get 310 milliseconds. So the difference between the Sony and Canon, I would say as the Sony is about 20 plus milliseconds faster compared to Canon electronic shutter mode, and a good 60 over milliseconds faster when you compare it with the mechanical mode. So the thing is, how do you uh, explain or really what's the big deal of these milliseconds? So to put it in perspective, uh, if you're shooting 30 frames per second on a Sony, every frame is about 30 plus milliseconds. So 60 milliseconds is equal to two frames, literally. And uh, 20 plus milliseconds, like I said just now, for the difference between electron shutter, that's about slightly less than a frame. So you can probably see a difference in it. And, you know, if you watch a normal TV or normal YouTube video, it's usually in 25 or 30 frames per second. As such, if one frame suddenly drops, you can notice it, and the frame drop will be about 60-something milliseconds between the frame and the next frame, and you can actually notice it itself. So 60-something milliseconds is probably noticeable, while 20-something milliseconds is probably not as noticeable, you know, in comparison-wise. So where does this all put us? Uh... Just to note that there is not many scenarios in this world that you cannot burst. So those times that you can burst, it probably doesn't matter too much. You can just predict and just burst through. But those times that you cannot burst, then latency matters. Because, you know, there is just that much reaction time you can do and there is just that much time before, you know, you capture the shot itself. So the Sony is definitely better in that regards. The Canon-wise, you have to choose between mechanical with great image quality because there is a difference about one dynamic range and then rolling shutter effect. While in electron shutter, yes, you get faster, you know, faster reaction time, but at a cost of image quality itself. So there is a trade-off for Canon and no trade-off for Alpha 1. So which do you prefer? I would say, of course, the Alpha 1 is better, but for $2,000 difference, and do you need the speed and latency difference? That's for you to decide. Now, I can think straight in my head that there is a time where you really cannot burst and that is doing flash photography. The good thing is that the Alpha 1 can actually fire a flash in electronic shutter mode while the Canon can only fire in mechanical shutter mode, which means that assuming that the trigger is the same speed, then the Sony has a good 60 over millisecond difference in terms of reaction time. And if you ask me, that may be a big deal between taking 10 shots and getting the shot ready or taking 5 shots and already get the shot that you want because the speed difference in it, especially if you're trying to do a dancing model, swinging model, flying model, whatever, as long as you're doing any form of action flash photography, then I think the Sony will be in a much better position because of the lower latency itself. 
And that's about it for today. I hope you enjoy this video. I just want to investigate the latency between both of these cameras and see whether it makes a difference. And I hope that it's actually useful for you if you are in the market that latency actually matters. And that's about it. I hope you enjoy this and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.